Between the power of the mind and the power of the spirit, we can walk in perpetual victory. We can have a victory after victory after victory through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. Notice is Genesis, please, if you will, chapter 39. When you have it there, please say amen. amen. And look at verse 21. And again, I'm not going to be preaching. I'm going to be instructive because I want to simply seek to impart light or information. Notice verse 21. Do you have it? But the Lord was with Joseph, and the Lord showed him mercy and gave him what? Favor. Notice God can give a person favor. Notice God gives favor. Read the rest of that verse. One, two, three, read. Notice he gives favor in the sight of other individuals for your benefit. Amen. Notice God gives favor in the sight, in the sight, that's a very important word, in the sight of others. God gives a person favor in the sight of others that they may be moved that the others may be moved to show extreme kindness why does God give a person favor he gives a person favor in the sight of others that when others see you they see something on your life and they are compelled by what they see on your life that's called favor to show you extreme kindness. Now we know in this passage Joseph was in prison for something he didn't do. But even in prison God gave him favor so that the jailer turned the whole prison over to Joseph. See this was God's favor and so the jailer was extremely, extremely kind to Joseph because, listen, when he saw Joseph in his sight, he saw something special on Joseph. So when he saw Joseph, because God had put favor on Joseph, when he saw Joseph with his eyesight, he was moved to be extremely kind to Joseph because of what God had given Joseph. What did God give Joseph? Favor. So when a person walks in divine favor, other people see something on them that they cannot explain. It is an unconscious thing that they see. They, 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 there's something on your life that causes them to want to show extreme kindness. This is called divine favor. Amen. 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 Please listen. This is very, very important. When you have this kind of favor on your life, people do things that are unreasonable, irrational, and unexpected. Say unreasonable. unreasonable. Say irrational. Irrational. Now, why do I say that? Because it wasn't rational for the jailer to turn the jail over to Joseph. It was beyond reasonable. But when you walk in divine favor, people do things for you that is beyond rational and that is beyond reasonable. It's unexpected. Can I get one amen? amen. Well, I told you all this about my own life, uh, when uh, Paul and I, we first got married and Lakeisha was just a couple of uh, months old and uh, we needed a car. 
And the Lord spoke to me, you know, exactly what bank I should go to, exactly who I should talk to. He told me I should talk to the person over the uh, finance and loan department. I'm just a kid. I don't know anything about that. But he told me just exactly who to go talk to. Well, I sat down and, and make a long story short. I sat in this man's office. He looked at my application. He looked at me. Now, my application did not have one work reference on it because I had never worked on a job over one year at that time in my whole life. It, not, it did not have one credit report history on it because I had never purchased anything on credit in my life. I'm just 20 years old, just got married, just a kid. But the man looked at my, my application, then he looked at me. He looked at my application, then he looked at me. He looked at my application, then he looked at me. He said, son, I don't know why I'm doing this. See, that's called favor. What he did was irrational. What he did wasn't reasonable. He said, son, I don't know why I'm doing this. He said, but I'm going to give you this loan. He said, please pay it because if you don't, I'll get in trouble. Well, see, that's called divine favor. Well, when God put me in college, uh, that was supernatural. I went to the college. I talked to the uh, person over the uh, admittance department. I don't know his title, but anyway, I went there and I talked to him. And uh, when I left his office, I had no intentions on, on starting college that day. I went just to get an application. But see, that was favor on my life. Divine favor. Yeah. So when I left his office, I mean, there are throngs of young people, hundreds of kids. When I left his office and was going back to work, I just left his office on my, my, uh, my job on my lunch break just to get an application. When I left his office and was walking down the sidewalk, I saw somebody running behind me calling my name. I didn't know who he was. I turned around this, this, this distinctive, educated, proper man of influence was literally running down the sidewalk after me. And he would not let me leave that campus until I, I was enrolled in college. And by the way, the semester had already started. I was late. I did not plan to start school that semester. He would not let me leave until I started that day. Because God wanted me to get my education. And God showed me favor. See, And on and on and on. See, these things, they're irrational. They're not reasonable. But when favor is on your life, when people see you, they see something special and they're moved to show you extreme kindness. This is called divine. Now, my point is this, is that these young people have this on their life. See, everywhere you go, you're going to see people running you down to show you kindness and it will be irrational. It can frighten you because it doesn't make sense. But you learn how to walk in it gracefully. Well, I told you about our uh, other daughter, Victoria. The whole world is opened up to her. She don't know why. Everywhere she go, people just show her kindness on top of kindness, favor, just extreme kindness. And it frightens. She say, Daddy, I don't know why they do this. I don't know. I don't do nothing. I don't understand. I say, it's just favor. Just relax and just walk in it. See, this is just favor. Are y'all here? This comes from God, not from man. It's a supernatural thing that God can place on a person's life. Are y'all still with me? Notice please Genesis chapter 46 and look at verse 34. I got to hurry up. Uh, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Genesis chapter 46 and look at verse 34 please. Notice the latter part of that verse. For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Notice every shepherd. How many shepherds? Every. Is a what? That is detestable, disgusting, the rink bottom of the bottom to every Egyptian. Now why is this important? Because Moses was a shepherd for 40 years, wasn't he? Yeah. 
Before he went to Egypt to set Israel free, the Bible says he lived on the backside of the mountain keeping his father-in-law's sheep. So Moses had been a shepherd for the last 40 years. And every shepherd was disgusting, detestable, the lowest of all low and abomination to the Egyptians. Because see, the Egyptians, they were high class. They were all above middle class because they all had slaves to work for them. So they had developed this attitude of being better than. So consequently, every shepherd was an abomination in the eyes of the Egyptians. Now that being said, notice again Exodus please chapter 11. Exodus chapter 11 and look at verse 3. Woo! Are you ready? Verse 3. And the Lord gave each of uh, the Israelites favor. And the Lord gave the people favor. Where? Notice favor always comes from God and he gives you favor in the sight of other people. So when they see you, they're more than willing to show you extreme kindness. It is irrational. It is not logical. It is unreasonable. But they do it because there's favor on you. Notice, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, or even, even who? Now Moses had been a shepherd for 40 years. He's just come from shepherding sheep. So the Bible says even the man Moses had favor. Now it says it specifically names Moses because for sure the Egyptians were supposed to despise him. Now notice, moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of all the people of Egypt. Now, why is this so important? Because it doesn't matter what race you are, what your pedigree is, what your past history is. It, see, those things don't matter. When God puts favor on you, people see to put great honor upon you. Now notice the Bible says Moses was great in their sight and he walked in honor among them, but he had been a shepherd. He still carried a shepherd's staff. He still was wearing shepherd's clothes. He was still smelly and stink. But yet even Moses walked in great favor among the Egyptians. Well, the Bible says because God gave them favor, you see. So, listen, when you have favor, forget about your background. It don't matter. See? When there's favor on your life, see, who your mama is, where you come from, what color you are, all that's irrelevant. Favor trumps all the natural because favor is supernatural. Are y'all still listening to me? So, notice again, and the Lord gave the people of Israel favor in the sight of the Egyptians... Moreover, even the man Moses was very great, very great, very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight. Now, remember, Pharaoh's servants had to for sure be uppity. Are y'all understanding this? Even uppity people bestowed honor upon Moses because of the favor that was on his life. Now... You got to understand that. I came from nothing. I was nobody. I had no history. I knew nothing. But when I sat in front of somebody with a great desk, with many people accountable to him, he said, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know if you notice, I'm black. <laughs> you see? See, this was a white man. 
but my color didn't matter when favor was on me. Amen. See, someone said, well, you know, you just can't get alone. I do. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. Y'all got it made in the shade. Just enjoy it and walk in it. Amen. Now, oh, I got so much I want to cover. I'm going so slow. Notice chapter 11 and look at verse 36. I'm sorry, 12 and look at verse 36. Notice chapter 12 and look at verse 36, please. I think if I stay behind the pulpit, I won't be so talkative. Yeah. Look at uh, uh, chapter 12 and look at verse 36, please. And the Lord gave, gave, the Lord did, gave the people favor. Where? Notice favor is always in other people's sight. You got to see this. It's always in other people's sight to do things for you that are irrational. And the Lord gave Israel favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And notice, so that. So that the Egyptians, they lent or they gave unto Israel such things as they what? Notice whatever you require to make your life what it needs to be, favor will cause other people to give it to you. Let me say that again. Whatever is required, whatever is required. For your life to be what God intent for it to be, favor on you will cause other people to give you what is required for you to fulfill God's purpose. Now the verse above that said that the Egyptians gave Israel their jewelry, their silver, their gold, or their fine raiment. Why would slave owners give their best to their slaves? Is that irrational? Yeah. Is it illogical? Yeah. Is it unreasonable? Yeah. Why did it happen, you tell me? Favor. Say it loud. Favor. When favor is on your life, things just are not rational anymore. Well, I had Rod to read this uh, last Sunday. Read it again, Rod, real quick. Real quick, real quick. Read it, Rod. One, two, three, read, son. Go. This correspondence. This, this, where's the microphone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you, you know, uh, hey, I'm on a timetable. <laughs> go. Let's go. Go, go. This correspondence is to confirm the designated gift of $150,000 for the purchase of land and erection of a church for the congregation known as Victorious Living Fellowship. Thank you. So this letter... Dated January 15th, 1991, came from Orlando Christian Center, Benny Hand, Benny Hand's ministry when he pastored here. And this is a letter stating, we have given to you $150,000 for you to purchase land and for you to build a sanctuary. Now, again, I never met Benny Hand. I never met Benny Hand before in my life. Why would Benny Hand do this for me? Well, 